This is Twit. We've all heard about lots of sensitive data leaking from the DOD, either through personal emails or just storing documents on their personal devices. But we all know humans are fickle and sometimes they make mistakes and relying on them to keep our data safe and secret is not always the best policy or defense. Well, the DOD is finally taking a step to make this better. They have issued a request for information, an RFI, from the industry for technology that will prevent the mislabeling and accidental or deliberate access and sharing of sensitive documents and data. Now, the DOD is part of the Office of Secretary of Defense, and they're basically saying investigating the use of commercial solutions for labeling and controlling access to sensitive information. Now, the defense IT officials are also seeking software that must be able to make real-time decisions and about the classification level of the information and the individual ability to access, change, delete, receive, or forward the information based on the credentials of the sending and receiving individual facility and, and system. Sound familiar? Well, if you remember that office assistant back from 2003, that wonderful Clippy, well, it sounds like the DOD is looking for classification Clippy. Rather than an autonomous machine learning system, the DOD is looking for an expert system that will advise humans and prevent making mistakes and in inadvertent disclosure sharing by offering suggestions. Of course, the DOD also wants the system to properly assign security attributes to non-human readable data formats, including binary files, images, video, and audio files, so that the system can properly determine whether a given user should allow access or not. Of course, there is a stipulation. They want the software to make sure it works with things like Microsoft Office products, including Office Exchange, SharePoint, and Link. And of course, the DISA supplies Exchange email and SharePoint link as enterprises to the DOD. All right, so my first question, it goes over to you, Curtis. Is it about time that the DOD and other organizations are taking control of their data here? I mean, this sounds like they should have been doing this a long time ago. Well, you know, I, I think we can say that they have been doing it. The problem is that the government now classifies so very many pieces of information. I w was doing some looking, and the the last time we saw any numbers on this at all was back around 2016, and it talked about how many tens of millions of documents a year are classified. So we're, we're getting to the point where the volume is such that it's very difficult for human beings to, to adequately deal with it. Now, there's a separate conversation to be had about whether we should be classifying this many pieces of information, uh, whether every document that is being classified should be classified. But again, uh, that's a different discussion. I think we've hit the point where the government, as with many companies, has to deal with a volume that makes some sort of automated tool um, whether it's machine learning, artificial intelligence, what you know, whatever term you want to use to describe it, that tool is going to be vital if they're going to stay current. And believe me, there are all kinds of complications that come from an excessively long delay in classifying any given document. Right, right, right. So, Brian, you, you kind of have a little bit of experience with this. It's not it's not easy to, to, to tag and classify documents, correct? Not, not at all. So, you know, having built, you know, enterprise systems in my prior life before F5 and worked with these systems now at F5, it, you know, just to make document data searchable is, is really difficult. And, and really people think, oh, just, just index all the text in it. And that's not really what you want. You want it tagged in a certain way so we can classify it and categorize it. But when users are entering that data about their, about their own documents, when you're relying on u data user entry, it's very unreliable and it doesn't scale because only some of the users that are really fastidious or really understand the importance of it are going to you know, do that every time they enter a new document. So really AI is where we do need to turn. Now, my question is, is the DOD really gonna do an RFI and not include uh, Google who's quite obviously solved this problem at scale? 
Right, right, right. Well, Curtis, I want to ask you a question. So I think, you know, a lot of times organizations, they tend to just kind of throw it in and say, okay, anything that you write is immediately secured under the highest security. Only you have access to it. And then you kind of have to opt in other people as you kind of add people to that. And then you can have systems that kind of verify if you're allowed to add those people or not. Is is that something that organizations should be doing rather than saying, hey, let me just go after the fact and go find all the documents in my organization that need to be secured using AI? Shouldn't they be starting at the the creation side of things? Well, if security was free, that would be a great way of doing things. But security isn't free, and it, it has costs at a number of different levels. One of them, of course, is the simple hardware and software required to properly secure things at the highest level. And that typically, especially on the government level, includes things like advanced biometrics and other multi-factor authentication requirements. Um, imagine if we started out with that being the default for every document that's created. The other cost comes in the transactional cost, if you will, the friction that great levels of classification add to the system. And most of the systems we use in business and government just are too inefficient already. Throw in that much friction and you're going to bring things to a grinding halt. So I would make the argument that from an economic standpoint, the, the proper response is to take it from the other point of view, that the default is that something is open unless there's some sort of clear and compelling reason to tag it with a higher level of, of classification or sensitivity. I think doing that and forcing people to think about it is the right way because that lets human beings be involved where they need to be making decisions and allows for automation in the things that follow that doing all of the tagging all the market marking all of the classifying that comes from the human decisions right right it's interesting that you said that that humans should be making decisions i actually saw a survey recently that cyber of cybersecurity professionals and the stats said that 30% of them of people claimed to be very knowledgeable about machine learning and AI in relation to cybersecurity analytics and operations, but only 12% have deployed or plan to deploy machine learning and AI for analytics and operations. So to me, I, I'm gonna I want to throw it over to you, Brian. I, it sounds like organizations are not making the right decisions here. Is it is it just education and awareness? I think it's availability of quality solutions that are easy to deploy. Now, when I say that, it, I mean, you know, they might, you might say 30% have knowledge in this area and only 12% want to have plans to deploy it because, you know, how many systems really are there out there that have a, a really good uh, comprehensive implementation of machine learning and AI. I mean, we see that in cyber every cybersecurity conference. You go to Black Hat or DEF CON or RSA, probably more famously, and you'll see the machine learning AI buzzwords flashed here, there, and everywhere. Everybody's got it in their product. But who's really deploying it in their product in a way that's meaningful, in a way that's usable for the typical enterprise? And I don't think there's a lot of examples of that uh, going around, probably the only one that's that's even creditable, and I'm and I'm not even sure if this is fair is is the use of Watson over at IBM. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think that the interesting thing here is that um, I guess it does make sense, to, like Curtis was saying, to come from the other side. Is obviously they have all these documents, this information already out there. So kind of having AI, machine learning, kind of jump in be applied as policy across the organization um, and, and to try starting to do detection and logging and key logging is a good way to kind of rein everybody back in. But again, like you guys were saying, sometimes this doesn't need to be the only level of security that needs to be in there. They need to start adding additional layers in there uh, to ensure that things are secure. But we'll have to see what goes on. We'll have to see what kind of things they decide to pick. We might never know, but we do know that there are solutions out there that can help them. So we'll see where we go from there.